Hello, everyone. This is Jessamine West. I want to welcome all of you to Facebook Success Summit 2012, an online summit designed to help you grow your business with Facebook. This is the first of many sessions that will be taking place over the next four weeks. To maximize your experience, we suggest you participate in our networking group and tweet about this live event using the Twitter hashtag pound SBSS12. To learn more about how to do this, visit the social networking link on the event login page. The transcripts for each session will be posted a week after the session. If you experience any technical difficulties, please click on the raise hand option which is located on the toolbar above the chat feature, and expect a one-to-one -one chat with me. Alternatively, you can speak live with a customer care agent by dialing 1-800-315-0175, or if you are listening to my voice by phone, press star zero for a customer care agent. If you are unable to connect using WebEx, you can still listen along on the phone and visit whitepapersource.com slash Facebook 2012 to find the PDF file for this presentation. In about 45 minutes, we'll transition to 15 minutes of live Q&A. At that time, we'll explain how you can dial in with your live questions. Let me transition to today's keynote presentation. The title of our keynote address is Why and How Businesses Are Succeeding with Facebook, presented by Mari Smith. Mari is the world's leading Facebook marketing expert and co-author of Facebook Marketing. In this session, she will show you what is possible with the right Facebook marketing strategy. She'll reveal top Facebook marketing pitfalls, teach you proven practices for marketing success, explore how to sell with Facebook, and share upcoming Facebook trends. Mari, thank you so much for joining us this evening. The floor is now yours. Thank you so much, Jessamine. It's really a delight and a pleasure to be here. Always a joy to contribute to these wonderful summits. Hello, everybody. As many of you know, Facebook is my absolute passion. I had the absolute pleasure, in fact, of falling in love with the site about May of 2007 when I got invited to be on the beta test team of an app. And it's really just been a magical journey. The rest is history, as they say. Of course, it's been a, a pretty interesting ride, as many of you know, <laughs> with all the amazing changes over the years. It's been quite the evolution in the last five and a half years. So today, what I would like to do is walk you through some higher level um, information about Facebook, in particular Facebook marketing, obviously, and on the desktop and also on mobile and as Jessamine said, you know, upcoming trends and whatnot. Now, if you've been on my sessions before, you know I tend to get quite tactical. I love to give away a lot of practical tips. You'll take a lot of notes. Feel free to tweet. I actually do have a lot of tweets pre-scheduled. They'll be coming out every five minutes, uh, paced with the information that I'll be sharing with you. And obviously, the hashtag is just FBSS12. Uh, and you can go ahead and uh, feel free to tweet away. So um, with that, I hope I got the hashtag right. Would all my tweets be coming out? We'll find out. <laughs> all right. So however, what I wanted to say is because we have so many amazing sessions coming up and a lot of my fellow presenters will be going into more in the trenches with the tactical and practical um, uh, tips for you, you might find this session is really a little more big picture. And I'm going to pepper it with some practicality for you. Okay. So why and how businesses are succeeding with Facebook? And uh, here is an overview of what I'm going to cover. Why market on Facebook? Of course, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir there. And um, Facebook search, and uh, you're like, Facebook search? Wait a minute. Okay, yep, that is coming. Facebook mobile, obviously, huge. Facebook ads, oh, I know, I can hear some of you cringing. Cringing. <laughs> uh, demystify a little bit of that. Marketing tools for Facebook page owners, and we'll round it out at the end with Facebook success stories. Now, of course, well, I do want to allow plenty of time for Q&A. I love Q&A, so please do get your questions ready. 
and uh, I always say that you can ask me anything, absolutely anything under the sun about Facebook marketing in particular and uh, social media marketing in general. Obviously, today's topic is Facebook. So with that, why market on Facebook? You're like, Mari, we already know why, but let's just give ourselves a reminder. Of course, it is the largest social network. And right now, I mean, gosh, Facebook are getting very, very close, as you all know, to the 1 billion member mark. That is astronomical. And who knows? Do you think that we'll ever see the day where there'll be 7 billion members on Facebook? Maybe not quite. There's always those people that Facebook's not quite their thing. But who knows? It'll probably could go past a billion. 81% of users are outside the U.S. and Canada. Pretty amazing. Now, what I find fascinating, this is where you really want to pay attention. Many of you be aware of this already. Over half of Facebook's monthly active users are accessing the site through mobile. Okay. 543, and in fact, they tend to be twice as active, uh, and they are, are tend to be more responsive to ads, too. I've got a slide coming up to talk to you about that. The average time per visit is 20 minutes, and more than 50% of users, users have 100 friends or more. The average is about 130. Uh, I just think this is an interesting fact. 235 million people play games each month. Uh, Facebook just made an announcement recently about uh, serving ads uh, on uh, game apps a whole other way to reach people. I don't know about you guys. I love words with friends. I, I play words with friends every day with my mom, and we just love it because I love that little chat feature, and uh, it's just fun. That's really the only game. Don't tell anybody that's the only game I play on Facebook. <laughs> I've just never really been into games. I love Facebook for all the other aspects of it. There was a recent study I want to draw your attention to, um, and if you can see my – let me see. Maybe the little highlighter pen will work better, but um, – Whoopsie, yeah, I'm just going to scribble all over it there. There it goes. So bit.ly uh, forward slash uppercase FMB underscore social media. I do have a tweet coming out about that. I don't know if it's out yet. But that you'll find was a wonderful blog post by my friend John Jans over at Duct Tape Marketing. And he was quoting from a recent survey in conjunction with Vocus. And they surveyed 400 SMBs, small to medium-sized businesses. 73% are currently using Facebook. Interestingly enough, it's kind of almost at saturation point in terms of SMBs. We're not going to see a big climb in that number in the coming year or so. Uh, most small businesses are, are looking at you know, also adding on sites like Pinterest or Instagram, doing more on Twitter, Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, and uh, you know, Facebook. They've gotten pretty good at um, of integrating that and really wanting to take it more advanced now. I found this stat fascinating, that 40% of SMBs prefer a smaller but highly engaged audience. And, you know, you can take a look at that study, like I say. There's some interesting stats in there. And, and interestingly enough, those that prefer a larger audience, maybe it's less engaged, uh, tend to actually get better results. Um, so who knows? If it's a numbers game, you want to just keep going to get as many fans as possible. And certainly for the last week or so, we've been discussing in depth uh, over on, on my fan page and several other colleagues' fan pages about uh, reach, you know, how far is your reach going? How far is your post traveling? Is it going real viral? Is it you're reaching the same audience? So um, something that kind of feels like a moving target, but um, hopefully we'll have a chance to cover that a little bit more in depth as we progress here today. Top metrics that SMBs want to measure, and this is just this is not just Facebook. This is uh, all, all of social media. And number one is traffic, and number two is number of new customers. So. Uh, to me, number two is, is, is a really critical point. All of your social media marketing has to lead to the bottom line. Otherwise, how are you tracking it and measuring it? How are you making money from these sites? So again, I know I'm preaching to the choir. I just want to re remind you all, <laughs> this all has to impact your profits ultimately. The top challenge that SMBs face, and I'm sure I can see a lot of you nodding your heads, is overcoming the perception that social media is free, especially those of my, my colleagues here on the line that actually do uh, social media marketing services for different companies and really trying to get buy-in uh, or those of you that work for corporations, you know, getting buy-in from uh, management that you know, you've know you got to be able to invest money in getting your social media results. Moving along, let's talk about this uh, pretty public event, <laughs> pun intended, right? This, this, this amazing, amazing event happened back on May 18th, can you believe it already, uh, the initial public offering. Facebook went public, a lot of speculation for a long time, and finally they went public, one of the biggest in technology. And as you all know, some major, you know, faux pas along the way, some lawsuits involved. I was listening to Sheryl Sandberg 
earlier today being interviewed by Charlie Rose. Uh, that was really quite fascinating. You can catch that over at the Facebook Live. Uh, they got the replay running. Um, it's quite interesting. You know, morale is, is dipped inside and outside the company, but it just was one of those ambitious days where things went a little awry. Uh, Facebook obviously now have a fiduciary duty to make money for their shareholders. Um, it was the third largest IPO in, in U.S. history. Astounding. Now, fortunately, though, guess what? There are signs of increasing confidence. And why? What is happening that's increasing that confidence? Well, drum roll, pre, please. Next slide. Ta-da! As TechCrunch calls it, as you can see from this URL at the bottom here, TechCrunch are calling it Facebookle. <laughs> Facebookle, obviously a combo of Facebook and Google. Well. Not quite. Not so fast, TechCrunch. TechCrunch kind of have a fun way of, of being a little edgy with their posts and their content. Um, and this is just totally a mock-up. This, this is not really what the Facebook search would look like. But the point is this. Facebook have an enormous, enormous amount of data at their disposal, far more really than Google has when it comes to personal activity, personal day-to-day -day habits of almost a billion people, right? So that is, in fact, searchable, if you wish. Could you imagine when Facebook gets really, really much better at this aspect of Facebook to allow us to come in, specifically advertisers, of course, that um, you know that we could have our um, results show up in a search engine where people were looking for some specific, obviously similar to Google, but not the same, absolutely not the same. Two different engines, completely different. And in fact, at the recent TechCrunch Disrupt, uh, event. Mark Zuckerberg was on stage being interviewed, and he said, you know, we're serving basically a billion queries a day. I think it's quite interesting to see that Google are serving a billion a month, so basically Facebook are at 30 billion a month. Quite, quite interesting when you think of that, but a third of what Google's doing, when you think of how long Google's been around, 14 years, they are the number one search engine, um, you know, which sidebar is really the reason to be active on Google+, Plus. one of the reasons. But I digress. You obviously want to be active on Facebook too. It's still the number one social network. Probably will be for a very long time to come. But what Mark said in terms of possibilities for Facebook search, imagine this. You're going to go, and you just could not do this on Google or any other search engines. What sushi restaurants have my friends gone to in New York in the last six months and liked? Okay. Or which of my friends or friends of friends work at a company that I'm interested in working at because I want to go talk to them about what it's going to be like to work there. Okay, so these are the kinds of search examples that Mark gave in his speech at uh, the very recent Disrupt conference. And I'm giving you a link here. You obviously, you got access to the slides. You can, these links are clickable in your slides. And I got some tweets going out about that too. So um, in fact, TechCrunch, did a, that, I think the um, title of that uh, post that you'll go to, it says that investors are salivating. <laughs> literally salivating over Facebook's plans for search because this is just it's humongous. No, I really feel that there is a, absolutely a place for both Facebook and Google. It's not, they're not really in competition. They're serving different needs. More on that in a bit. So maybe some of you have seen sponsored results, search ads. I don't think these are available to the general. You can't just go into your ads um, dashboard and buy these. Um, not that I've seen yet anyway. But um, this is pretty interesting, and hopefully you can see that in my screenshot. So for example, I began to type the word. These are my own screenshots. I just began to type OKCupid. Okay Let's just say I was looking for that site. Now, the sponsor where I got my red arrow, you go to type OKCupid, okay you want to bring up their fan page. The first result is a direct competitor, Match.com. Interesting. So Match have paid to have that keyword over here on the right. Touchy topic right now, but obviously very timely. Politics. You go to type. All I typed there is OBA. Went to type Obama, and the first result is Mitt Romney. Now, of course, oh, you're all like, don't throw stones or tomatoes at me or tomatoes. <laughs> uh, but I'm just pointing out what's possible. And I know some of you might even be cringing. Going, Wait a minute. You can do that. You can just buy a, a sponsored search result for your direct competitor. Well, yes, you can. And that's what Facebook are doing, and that's what Google have done for, you know, a long time. Which feels like decades, but whatever, 14 years or whatever since they've had their paid results. I don't remember when that actually came out. But you get, the, you get the drift here of what's possible going forward, of where you'll be able to 
position your business in front of the eyeballs of people who are directly searching for something that you might be able to offer them. So I think this this point I was saying earlier about, you know, okay, Facebook versus Google. It is not a contest, not a war, it's not a battle. Yes, there's healthy competition between the two behemoths, but quite frankly, Facebook's the next generation internet. That has been a thing that's been around for quite some time. I've been saying that for about five years. And you know, people are going to go, this whole aspect of word of mouth on steroids, as Sheryl Sandberg calls it, word of mouth at scale, that when you're searching for something, you'd rather have a recommendation from a few friends. You're going to go and you're going to type in to the Facebook search engine, if you will, uh, looking for certain things that you can get endorsed by or, you know, uh, thumbs up from friends. Go check this out. You're, you're, you're a trusted friend. The person says, yep, check this out. So that's the difference versus you know, having the general whole entire web indexed through Google, to me, it's just a very different different experience. And there's a totally a place for both. Let's switch gears for a second here and talk about Facebook's App Center. This was something new this year as well. I don't know any of you um, that I wish I could see your live tweets or your live chat. I always love to be able to interact with my peeps, but it will probably pull me off focus. So I'm just going to stay focused on the topics, and we'll get to some Q&A too. But I am curious to know, about the App Center. When that launched, facebook.com slash App Center, back in May of this year, and what we suddenly started to see is an influx of what are called open graph apps and frictionless sharing. i got to tell you guys, much as I love Facebook, much as I love Mark Zuckerberg, much as I love his vision to make the world more open and connected, I personally am not a fan of the frictionless sharing apps. Those are the ones that you connect one time, and then any action that you take via that app, it just automatically goes out into the stream, into the newsfeed of your friends. So examples are like the newsfeed readers, you know, like the Washington Post or Huffington Post, New York Times, whatever. Um, I don't see too many of them on newsfeed. Oh, I remember why, because I blocked them all. Yeah. <laughs> Blown moment. Seriously, though, I mean, with all due respect, I know there's different strokes for different folks. My preference... Interestingly enough, as much as I'm a very open person, I'm sure many of you can resonate with this. I see you nodding your heads. I feel you. That you're like, okay, I'm all for being open and you know, living my life out loud kind of thing. But there's certain times when I might want to read an article, and I don't want all my friends to see that I've read the article until I've checked it out. And then I want to be at, at choice to decide, okay, all right, now I'm ready to share this one with my friends. We call it selective transparency. You guys heard that term, selective transparency. It's kind of an oxymoron but it's the name of the game in these days with social media. It's your reputation. You get to be in control of it. It's not that you're not being honest. It's that you get to say what's going out into the stream or not. These apps, the goal is to turn Facebook from a social media site into a central hub for Internet activity. Obviously, apps like Spotify was just flooding the stream for, for quite some time there. I seem to have slowed down just a little bit. TV shows, you know, articles, news, sports, food, etc. you name it, all just flooding into the stream. So moving along, mobile. Let's talk about mobile. This is humongous. And like I say, that talk that I was just listening to with Sheryl Sandberg and Charlie Rose and talking about, uh, you know, the boom of mobile and uh, the ridiculous amount of mobile phones that at some point, actually I read a stat not long ago, maybe you guys know where, where this was from, but there is very soon going to be more mobile phone subscriptions on the planet than there are people on the planet. Crazy, isn't that crazy? Basically, that means, obviously, that you've got people with more than one subscription. And interestingly enough, I am hearing of people, a um, colleague of mine in Australia, where it's just the norm to carry two cell phones. So you'd have you know, one for personal and one for business. Because, uh, you know, there's many apps that when you install the app, it's going to go ahead and access your text messages, it's going to access your address book, your phone book, um, information from other apps, things like that. And people are just blissfully unaware that that's happening. The data is always anonymized. They're not going to utilize that data against you or anything. But just the fact that it happens is quite scary for a lot of people. So they go ahead and they'll have, you know, one form for business and one form for personal. That's supposed to be a P and a V. <laughs> But you can see this growth, this astronomical growth of monthly active users on mobile. Uh, it's just been incredible the last couple of years. So let's talk about, in a moment, I've got some slides coming up about how you can get your business in front of more of those mobile users. Remember, we've got over half a billion, and they've got everything, their whole lives in the palm of their hands with those mobile devices, just incredible. 
um, Facebook mobile ads. So basically only really launched this year, June 5th. Advertise. I don't know if many of you know this, but for those of you that are familiar with Facebook ads and what you can do with them, did you know that when you go into your mobile, uh, excuse me, your ads dashboard, you can target mobile users based on operating systems. Okay, and this little screenshot that I have here, this is right here under broad categories when you're going to build your ad out. So you could go ahead and target all mobile users, you know, just Android users, uh, Apple, iOS, other operating system, etc. Even down to the version. You'll say you only want to target iPad 3 users. Amazing. Amazing that that data is even available for us. Sponsored stories is the only ad type displayed on mobile. Now, sponsored stories, um, actually I have this in a tweet I know, but it's sponsored stories and promoted posts. So most of you are familiar with promoted posts now. Uh, you need 400 likes, 400 fans on your fan page uh, before it kicks in, but you'll start to see promoted posts. And what you can do with that is pay Facebook to have your post shown to more of your fans. And then a really cool feature they introduced, um, in fact, I got this coming up in a second, is um, being able to target your friends with fans, which I really find interesting. Don't you? I mean, gosh, you know, if you've liked a page, but then because by virtue of you liking a page, now all of a sudden that page owner can buy space or rent space in the news feed of your friends when really your friends didn't like the page, but oh well. It's so funny because I can always wear two hats with Facebook. I have my you know user hat on from the user experience and how I like to interact with Facebook as a user, but then I'm also a marketer and I just love to think like an art uh, marketer and behave like a marketer, and so I love to straddle both camps. <laughs> see what works for both. So, you know, sponsor stories and promote a post and now offers, okay? Offers, I got that coming up in a second too, but basically introduced a big change just a couple of weeks ago that offers are now available to all fan pages with over 5,000 likes. In fact, you do need um, uh, 5,000. I think I got that right. I got my facts coming up in a second. There's so many different numbers here. I know advanced targeting is available over 5,000 uh, in any case, sponsor stories, promoter posts, and offers. Okay, those are the three things you want to focus on. But the reason I kind of put offers in its own category is that you can now not have an offer without tying it to a sponsor story or a promoted post or any other ad product. Okay, and I'm actually seeing. I got to admit, there was uh, recently my eyes have been really dialed in and watching, I'm looking for great, great examples of offers. And I'm seeing ones that if it's like a coupon, it looks like a coupon with a little dotted line out around it, as if you would, you know, tear it out of the computer screen. And uh, uh, set up on the right-hand column like an ad, and I see it's an offer, and you can just click and claim the offer right from the ad, which I think that's awesome. Now, that's from the desktop, whereas when you do the sponsor story and the promoted post, it goes into the news feed, okay? Hopefully you guys got that. That's why you want to do the sponsor stories and or promoted post because that's that's the only ad types that go into mobile. Interestingly enough, sponsor stories actually yield a million dollars a day in ad revenue um, and half of which is from mobile ads. And right now there's that part that I mentioned that earlier about beta, they're beta testing the mobile ad network and third party apps so to be able to buy ads to serve in front of your you know users that are playing whatever those games are. Angry Birds, Farmville. Let me hear play Farmville? No. <laughs> Where's with friends? Yeah. Good news is that mobile ads are more effective, okay? Remember that these mobile users are twice as active. They're, they've got their phone, their whole world in the palm of their hands. They're flipping through their news feed. They're consuming much more information than the desktop users. Wonderful study by Ad Parlor. You can find out information about them, just adparlor.com. And they did a study looking at 200 million ad impressions. It's a sizable amount of ads, obviously. And they did this comparison between mobile ads and non-mobile sponsored stories, okay? Click-through rates were 15 times higher on mobile, good news. Clicks are 30% cheaper on mobile, good news. Conversion rates, not so good news. They're lower, a little bit lower, but still uh, great for the visibility, for doing some testing. Maybe you'll find your, your conversion is a little higher. Android, uh, click, this is, I thought this was fascinating. Android, it's the click, CTR means click-through rate, okay? That's when people see the ad and they click on it. 62% higher than iPhones and Blackberries. You're like, what? Yep, there you go. I know I hear all you Droid fans go cheering in the background there. <laughs> 
Interestingly enough, the leading vertical for mobile is uh, entertainment. So you can take a look at that study at Ad Parlor. Now, mobile users' behavior is different from non-mobile users after they like a fan page. Mobile fans comment 22% more and like 63% more. This, that, whatever you use, your index finger or your thumb, you know, my, my fellow iPhone owners out there, and the droids obviously, and whatever smartphone you have, I, I don't know about you guys, but I just find it so easy if you're like a little break through the day and you go, you're just flipping through your news feed, oh, I like that, I like that. Knowing full well, of course, again, from a user standpoint and also wearing that marketing hat that when you like a piece of content, uh, whatever that content is, especially if it's public, if you're liking a piece of public content from, say, someone you subscribe to uh, or a fan page, then that activity is going to go out into the ticker, the ticker, that fast-moving little stream or river of information that goes by on the right-hand side uh, at the top. If you have your chat open, it typically displays over there. So I'm always, again, very cognizant about, okay, what am I putting my name to? To me, like the Facebook Like button, absolutely, is a form of endorsement. You are saying, I like this. I'm willing to put my name to this. I'm willing to put my reputation on the line because I support this. I mean, it goes that far. So always want to be careful what you like. Always be mindful about what you're pushing into the ticker and the newsfeed of your friends, okay, and your subscribers. Now, non-mobile fans, back to this stat here, Non-mobile fans drive six to eight percent, excuse me, six to eight times more engagement in terms of creating posts, viewing photos, clicking on links, and watching videos. So as you're growing your business and, and you know moving forward with your Facebook marketing going into 2013, really want to be keeping some of these stats in mind and just knowing that when you're producing content, okay, when you're creating your content for your Facebook fan page that so much of it is going out and being consumed on mobile, and you really want to cater to that, probably keeping your um, narrative short, shorter post tend to get more engagement, uh, using more Im images, and many of you know that already, but some of you don't. It's just so critical to use images in your posts. I'd say nine times out of ten, you're going to get better news feed visibility, better edge ranking, okay? Something else that's quite interesting that could very well be coming along and as we, we continue to see more progress on um, Facebook ads is, the especially around mobile, the possibility of geo-targeting, okay? Because obviously every smartphone, assuming you have that turned on, 99% of people surely do, the ability to you know, let people where you, know where you are. So Facebook could begin allowing location-based targeting. This is actually from that ad parlor uh, study. So imagine this, you could target users based on nearby location. Anybody here, if you either have a local business or you work with local businesses, this is good news. You want to keep your eye on this coming down the line. Your ad could then show up in the news feed if a user is near your physical location. I think that is really exciting. It's kind of a sign of the times of where Facebook and mobile could well, could well be going, Facebook and mobile and uh, advertising. Let's move into, oops, and my goodness, a typo. My apologies for the typo. It's not marketing, it's marketing. See, my dyslexia. Just seeing if you're all paying attention. Marketing tools for page owners. <laughs> all right. Hands up who's using the Facebook Pages Manager mobile app. Well, obviously, those of you that are on the iPhone. I'm curious, is there, is there an Android version? My apologies for my ignorance on this one. I can't remember if they only did one for the iOS or not. Um, so I will, right now I'm going to speak primarily to the, to the iPhone users. If there is one for the Droid, feel free to tweet me. I'll go back and, and check my tweets. But um, I, sometimes I have tunnel vision when it comes to iPhones. My apologies to my Android friends out there. What you can do with this app, and many of you, okay, when this came out early this year, you're like, oh, my God, not another Facebook app. I already have the regular Facebook app, and then there was the Facebook Camera app, and then there was this Facebook Pages Manager app, and it's like I, just, I don't need another app. However, the good news is what's happened is that because there's a lot of data and a lot of moving parts, a lot of information to assimilate and manage, that when Facebook were able to put that into a separate app, it actually is much faster. It uh, has some great, great features. You can go in and see your stats. You can now even purchase promoted posts right from the mobile app. You can manage multiple pages, post updates and photos. You can schedule that. But not there. You can even schedule. So this is all the more reason you're out and about. You know, those of you that do your own fan page management, 
This is a wonderful way. You don't have to wait to get back to your desk to you know, be, be handling your content. You can respond to comments and messages, get notifications, view your latest insights, including check-ins, et cetera, and purchase promoted posts. So I just think it's a really, really uh, awesome app. And they've done pretty good in, in, in adding some um, new features and upgrades and whatnot. You can view your insights, like I say. There's got three different pages. Wherever you see that these three dotted lines, those you're familiar with iOS, you know, you just swipe your finger and uh, swipe your finger, and it goes and shows you more data, uh, which I think is really, really quite interesting. Oh, I'm showing you a little, uh, a little sneak peek at one of my recent promotions. Uh, you can see uh, 22,000 organic, 33,000 paid. Very interesting. This whole con conversation around reach. Um, Paid reach does work. Uh, I've seen a little bit of bumps and glitches along the way. I think maybe there's some bugs in reporting, um, that along with the fact that um, you know Facebook is doing a little bit of tweaking to the algorithm. But you know, just was speculating today. Shout out to my buddies John Loomer and Hugh Bress. Uh, we've been having quite extensive conversations about this, and it's unfortunate to see. Oftentimes, we get the group think. You're all familiar with the group thinker. I hate to use this word, but sheeple people turn into. Sheep is sheeple. <laughs> I don't mean that derogatorily. What I'm going, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you all as fellow Facebook marketers, fellow marketers, really. When you see information coming along, question it. Question the source. Do your own research. Dig deeper. Look at your numbers. Compare to other people's numbers, and don't just assume. Oh my God, you know, Facebook's screwing around with us. Uh, you know, it's pay to play. Oh, we're never going to get our stuff seen in the feed unless we do this or the other. Yes, there's been some changes. I'm not here to evangelize Facebook. I don't work for Facebook. I just love the site, and I, I, I think it's you know life-changing what it's done to the planet. But um, I am seeing that you'll get a good boost in your reach, experimenting now and again, now and then with some paid promotions, not every post you don't need to promote, and just throw a little budget in. And I do find that no matter how much budget I allocate, Facebook never uses it all. Like here's I put 75 and it just ran its course for, for 40 bucks. Now, hot tip for you marketers, listen up, very important. When you are about to do any kind of promotional campaign, by promotional I mean that you're going to be selling something, offering something, maybe it's a free webinar, maybe it's a new product line, maybe it's an event, something that you want to offer. You really want to be focusing probably about roughly three to five days in advance Filling up the hopper, the content hopper, if you will, posting great, great content. You always want to post great content anyway, but post good content on your fan page and do some promotion. Allocate a bit of a budget to boost your edge rank. See what I'm saying? You want to boost your edge rank with good value-added content ahead of your promotion so that you don't necessarily have to pay for the promotions when you're actually promoting something. Got it? So then it just comes through more organically when your edge rank, your reach is a little bit higher. Okay, little tip for you there. Promoted post, obviously, those of you who know, what is promoted post, Mari? It's that little button. Let's say you need 400 likes uh, on your fan page for that to show up. Basically, you're paying. I know you're like, oh, I don't want to pay, but I paid to get my fans, and I have to pay for them. You know, just my fans to see my post. But it's just that's the way it's working because the way the page is set up, you got your news feed. There's only a certain amount, it's a finite amount of, of uh, real estate in that news feed and all your friends and all your fans and whatnot. So we're all kind of you know, competing for space in that news feed. And Facebook really wants to get it more relevant. Um, but the good news is, like I say, you can go ahead and expand to friends of fans. The one thing, and I'm always a little reticent about this. I'll give you a, another tip here. It's something that I, I do in my own uh, fan page. Because the posts that are promoted are labeled with sponsored, those of you savvy Facebook users um, that are watching your streams on desktop and on mobile and you're looking to see who's spending money on Facebook, who's buying, promoted, who's you know, paying for the promoted post, and you're looking for that little sponsored, um, I don't always like to reveal that right away. So something that I might do is I'll make a post on Facebook, I'll let it go viral or let it go organic for maybe four, six, eight, maybe say up to 12 hours, let it just go in the newsfeed organically. Then I'll circle back and then I'll do a promotion on it and, and just boost those numbers a little bit. But I want to give it a head start by itself organically. And then if I want to boost it more, I'm willing to spend a little bit of money. I don't do that with every post. Like I say, it will do that periodically when I want to boost the reach prior to promotion. 
It's also displayed in mobile. Those of you who are you know, paying attention to your mobile feed, you will see when actually someone's paid to have their, you know, their um, content seen by more fans because it will actually say sponsored. Page post targeting. Here we go. So pages with over 5,000 likes. So obviously, you know, if you're nowhere near that, it could take a little bit of time to get there. And, and there's you know, different strategies to do that. But basically, some of it will be covered, covered in this conference, which is awesome. But once you get to 5,000 likes, you can now, what will happen is where you have on the publisher, this thing's called a publisher, you've got your little clock for doing the scheduling, you've got your little place marker for putting location, and right in between, what's going to show up right in between is a little a target, okay? And, a, and that little target uh, shows uh, advanced targeting. And as I drop down here, show you this little arrow here. You can target your posts by gender, relationship status, educational status, interested in age, location, and language. And by the way, uh, this one here, interested in, in, I was hoping that that would be real interest, such as you can buy with the, the regular ad product. However, it, interested, in it, interested in is tied to the relationship status, as many of you know. So it's basically going to say men or women. <laughs> okay, so that's the extent of that that target there. But what's really cool is as you're playing around with the, ad, the, uh, the specific targeting, the advanced targeting, you'll see this number. This number will change. Okay, so I recently you know, experimented myself and I asked, I put out a little advanced targeting, uh, targeted post and I, and I asked the people that could see it to click the like button just to let me know. You know. Click the like button if you can see this. You might want to do that if you've got this feature available on your site. I think two things basically as I'm saying here. Number one, you're going to be able to share more relevant content, okay? So you might, for example, if you're sharing content that you think is maybe more, more of interest to women, you could try a status just, just to your female fans, and um, conversely, just to male fans, etc. cetera. Um, oops, I have the relationship, you know what I mean? I meant to do gender. And then number two, I think that you could end up increasing your news feed visibility, and PTAT is, is your people talking about this. That's your number that's right beside your number of fans. This number of people talking about this, because you may well be able to reach more of your fans periodically by experimenting with this advanced targeting feature and get a nice little boost in your reach. Here's the offers product. I think these are brilliant. I blogged about these way back when, when they first came out in May, and I just thought it was phenomenal. At the time, I was so disappointed. I couldn't believe they were only available to place pages. I just thought they were brilliant. And however, fortunately, just in the last couple of weeks, this has been launched out to all pages with, um, no, I don't, can't believe I don't have this sitting here. Ah, darn it. It is available to all pages with more than 400 likes. I should have had that number for you. Um, we'll get that. Maybe it's going to have my tweet, or whoever knows it can tweet that. Launched on May 12, but only to place pages at the time. Beautiful, beautiful thing about offers is it's displayed in the news feed. Remember, mobile. One quick claim, which I love. So this we're looking at, this screenshot, we're obviously we're looking at that is not from my mobile, but it's from my desktop. And, but it shows up the same in mobile. And it's one click. You click on this little thing, get offer, and you notice how it has a little email icon. That's how it works. The person goes, get offer, boom, instantly, emails details. Uh, I put details of this site, Foibly, F-O-I-B-L-Y. They had a little bit of a, a, a glitch the other day on their site, but they're back up and running. And Foibly.com is a compilation of offers. You want to check out all the different Facebook offers that are available right now? You can do that at Foibly.com. Okay. Uh, let's just see. A quick time check and look at my slides. We're doing fantastic. Okay. We're going to have at least 15 minutes for Q&A. Get your questions ready. Jessamine will open the lines shortly, and you'll be able to ask any questions. Now, the offers are free to set up. I'm going to have to scratch this out. They're free to set up. However, they will not run any longer unless you tie it to an ad product. However, it's not really a big, big fuss or a deal. You're going to take a, a, a you know, nominal budget and just do a promoted post, for example. Let's say even somewhere between $10 and $50. That could be so amazing to do that for a really well-crafted offer. I can, you know, offers are really going to be the same, same concept as ads insofar as you want an, a very eye-catching, striking image. You want a 
crystal clear description of the offer and just so, so clear about how people claim the offer. Those are the types of offers that are going to go really well. Quick sidebar, I saw a few of my fans were talking about the fact that since offers came along, there's been some interesting shenanigans. There's been some people that have taken, you know, like affiliate offers. Affiliate offers I don't have a problem with, but um, fake offers. People have been saying, you know, putting like coupons over maybe to Living Social or something like that or somebody, I forget what it was, Dunkin' Donuts or something. There's been like fake coupon codes and you click through and it's, it's um, you know, erroneously taking you to their website. So obviously there will be a shakeout. There will be places to report things like that. Facebook uh, often they'll launch a product, and then the first thing you'll find is the opportunity. <laughs> the opportunities will come along and you know try to mess with it. But let's talk about a couple of success stories here. In fact, I think I have three for you, and then we'll get for Q and A. Facebook success stories. Let's give a shout out to State Bicycle Company. These guys have done awesome, and I want to really draw your attention to some of the things that they've done, which you can implement. First of all, five hundred thousand in annual incremental sales from coupon codes coupon codes. No. This is the part I'm talking about where you can do for free, for free, for free. If you look at this screenshot, you can even go to their fan page. It's facebook.com slash state bicycle. They are not doing a promoted post. They're not doing an offers. They're not paying for this. They have paid for it. They've paid you know, a lot of money for ads. But this particular approach is available for anyone. All they've done is just posted a little picture and they're saying sale. Get $10 off our iPhone and Samsung Galaxy cases. Use coupon code SAVE10CASE. Tonight only. Get them here. Link. Bada boom, bada bing, right? <laughs> super, super easy. There's nothing stopping you from doing offers and coupon codes and stuff like that. Um, really, really nicely done. They went from 4,600 to 46,000 fans in 12 months. Fantastic. Host frequent photo contests. And if you scroll through their page, you'll find that they do not necessarily do an official contest app. They are hosting photo contests, and I can hear you all squealing and raising your arms and protest, protest and going, wait a minute, Mari, thought you had to comply with all the Facebook terms. Well, theoretically, yes, of course you do. Number one reason why we have contests going through, we, you know, Facebook makes us do this through the apps, that they want to do their best to mitigate as much liability as possible. But all these, you know, harmless, innocuous types of contests, photo contests, it's not really a big deal. Facebook's not going to come along and, and, and really, you know, put the heavy foot down. Um, they've done, State Bicycle did the Facebook Friday for discount coupon. Oh, my phone ringer off, turn that off. Um, encourage fans to like posts to see a sneak peek of new products. I think that's kind of cool, too. Got to move into the last two case studies and we'll go to time for q &A. Next one, I love what these guys have done. Luxury Link at Facebook.com uh, slash Luxury Link. They're a high-end hotel website. I just love this image. I love it. Doesn't that look gloriously relaxing? I'd like to just you know wave a magic wand and be there right now <laughs> instead of you know 100 degrees San Diego right now. It's hot. 100% increase in sales for travel packages. Fantastic. 30% increase in site visits month over month. What they did? Status update. See. Not promoted polls, not ads, status updates, offering chance to win getaways. These guys have done something very similar to our friends at State Bicycle. Simple little contest, not using an app. Check them out, see if you can get some ideas there. Um, ads, I thought it was a really interesting idea that these guys did. The ads featuring a live chat with travel experts. And notice the targeted ads, okay? They're high end hotel website. So they're targeting ads. The, of people that are married, and they've liked brands like Chanel, Fendi, Prada. Very clever, very cleverly done. And the final example here, Canvas people. They're wonderful. They create uh, Canvas portraits from your own photos. They've seen a 10x increase in page engagement. They've driven nearly 4,000 direct purchases. Fantastic. And again, check these guys out. Um, oops, I forgot to put their link in there, but they are facebook.com slash Canvas people. A variety of incentives via apps, photo contests, hidden coupon codes, which is really clever, sweepstakes, seasonal promotions. Anybody can include seasonal promotions. We've got uh, what, Halloween coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you name it, all kinds of great things for seasonal posts. Uh, like us and get a deal. This is very clever. Okay, Who's to say that um, default landing tabs no longer work? Just because Facebook did away with the tabs, you can still do a kind of like 
not forced opt-in, but you can definitely um, give people an incentive to like your page by doing exactly what Candace people have done here. They done, uh, and they did some sponsored stories. Okay, no, right on cue. Jessamine, I am going to hand over to you, my friend, and uh, we're time for questions. Fantastic. You are always right on cue. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the lines are open for your questions. Just press star 8 on your telephone keypad if you'd like to ask Mari a question. Your questions will, of course, be answered in the order they are received. If you're listening to my voice on your computer and you would like to ask Mari a question, just dial 866-630-3507 and enter PIN 9206. Once dialed in, just press star 8 to be placed in the question queue. That number is also displayed in the orange box on your screen. Callers outside the United States and Canada should follow the instructions in that orange box as well. And Mr. Michael Stelzner is here to kick off Q&A. Thank you very much, Jessamine, and thank you, Mari. Everybody be sure to call in while we're waiting for your calls. I'm going to go ahead and ask Mari a couple questions. <coughs> Mari, um, mm -hmm. this first question has to do with um, the personal profile. You have a massive amount of people that are following your personal profile, mm -hmm. and um, more than you even do on your your Facebook page. Right. I'm curious what your thoughts are on um, the use of personal profiles versus pages when you are the brand. Mm. For example, if you're you know a real estate agent or insurance agent or a consultant or book author. Um, there seems to be pros and cons and certain kinds of penalties that might be, um, you know, or restrictions that might be for brands may not be there for the personal profile. I'm curious if you can speak a little bit about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought this up. It's one of my favorite topics. I have my fan page for, gosh, four and a half years, and I have um, 80,000 fans. Awesome. Great. Nice, slow, steady growth. On my personal profile, one year ago, September of 2011, Facebook brought out this whole concept of subscribe, which was kind of in response to Google+, Plus, I rather think, and basically blew the lid off the 5,000 friend limit, if you will. So what happens, a couple of really important points, actually. I was speaking at a women's conference last week, and this came up because there's still so much confusion about it. If you choose to activate subscribe, it's not automatically activated. You go to facebook.com slash about slash subscribe. You can choose to activate it or not. When you activate it, what you're basically doing is opening up your personal profile for anybody on Facebook to subscribe, to begin to receive your public posts in their newsfeed. Now, where the confusion lies is everything you post publicly already anyway, whether you have subscribe on or off, is visible to the public. So why not activate your subscribe? And then what that does is it pushes your public content into the newsfeed of your subscribers. And now, Facebook does tend to favor personal profiles in the newsfeed. I guarantee you that everybody here sees more content from personal profiles, friends and people they've subscribed to, than they do on fan pages. So that's why I'm a huge proponent of enabling subscribe. And in one year, a little over a year, I have 367,000 subscribers. And People ask me, well, how did you get that many? And it just, a lot of it just seemed to blow up. Now, there's a few things I do, like I'll comment. Anytime I see the Facebook comment, uh, an opportunity to comment using the Facebook comments plugin, you know, outside Facebook on the web, um, it, it automatically puts a little blurb about me and uh, has a link where you can subscribe right from that comment. Um, I've created interest lists. Um, I, I do highly encourage people to, they could friend me. Really interesting thing that when you go to friend someone who has a subscribe turned on, they automatically, instantly become a subscriber. As and until you accept them as a friend. If you never accept them as a friend, they're always going to be a subscriber. So as a marketer, just to round that off, Mike, as a marketer, if anybody here has any desire to have an additional marketing channel, then I would highly recommend turning on your subscribe not like you're going to pour tons of content to do with business and marketing, but you're simply opening up an opportunity to connect with more people. And over time, you can drive them to your fan page where it's perfectly acceptable to talk more about business. 
All right, fantastic. Excellent question. We are going to take so those questions here queuing up. Okay. Again, that's star eight, you guys, to ask Mari a live question. First caller, you may go ahead with your question. Hi, I just had a question for you um, about Facebook compared to my blog. So on my blog, I'm trying to get more user conversations and actually connect with my users and, and not so much with Facebook. And I'm trying to really figure out the strategy and balancing between the communication I have on my blog and then using Facebook for other things. And I'm kind of thinking about using Facebook for more um, promotional and, and advertising type aspects of the site. So I was just wondering if you had any advice for balancing a blog and a Facebook page. Sure, absolutely. Well, here's the thing. You always, always, always want to build your own platform. and You want to maintain control over that. So I love what you're doing, 100% behind having a blog and your own email list. You know, Mike and Social Media Examiner is a perfect example of that. However, there's also um, a model called Hub and Spoke. So if your blog or website is the hub, then the different spokes are the communities where other where people are hanging out, other communities where people are hanging out. And I always say meet people where they're at. If you have a you know portion or a proportion of your market like to hang out on Facebook, you may as well meet them there. And what Facebook is is a place to build community, build relationships, share content, both yours and what I call OPC, other people's content, and you'll share that periodically on Facebook. You don't even need to do a lot of posts, maybe twice a day, two to three times a day at most. And it'll be a combination of your own blog posts and other people's, like I say, and your goal there is you know, to just nurture those relationships and very gently guide people back over to your website, back to your opt-in box and your offers and your different uh, products or services. It's so, do you see what I'm saying? It's not like either or. You're really using them in conjunction with each other. So I really think you're on the right path. And um, you know, just be looking at some successful Facebook pages and see what you might want to emulate. Does that help at all? Perfect answer. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right, thanks for that question as well. Again, star eight to ask Mari a question. Next caller from New Hampshire, you may go ahead with your question. Hello, Mari, it's Peggy. How are you? Hi, Peggy. Awesome, thanks. Um, I have a couple of Facebook pages that I manage, and I, you know, I've taken some of your other classes, so I'm doing all the, you know, I'm posting frequently, I'm varying my content, I post pictures with everything, I engage with the people who engage. And I'm stuck on one of my pages at like a 400 likes. So what would you suggest for people who have a page where they are doing the things, you know, the recommended good things, but you know how sometimes you can plateau at a number? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, plateauing is, is quite commonplace. And there I would look to see number one top of the list is going to have to boil down to budget. And so uh -huh. look at getting some ads targeting your friends of fans to be able yeah. to come and join the page and with that the social proof element so that they can see when a friend has liked the page. Um, you might even experiment with some video. Uh, if you post mm -hmm. a video on your fan page and then turn it into a promoted post, the mm -hmm. video goes into the ad. So you mm -hmm. can do that either with a Facebook video or a YouTube video. Um, and just something creative that catches people's eye. I would try an offer too. Try try a really fun offer and use that the promoted post and expand that out to um, Oh, my apologies, you're seeing it's plateaued at 400, so maybe that's not, uh, might not be available. But I would certainly do ads. Then the other thing is you're going to look to see where else do you have um, a following. So I would say Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, LinkedIn, your own email list, you know, your blog, and see where you can begin to just drive some activity to that Facebook to get yourself over that, that plateau and, and get mm -hmm. some fun stuff going on. Maybe even not run a, a contest. Yeah, I haven't tried a contest yet, but I've put like the link, you know, like all the widgets on my other blogs, and I put just that in my email signature to get the likes for that page. Great. And, Great. Um, so I, I, I yeah, go pardon ahead. me. I was going to say that you also want to watch the frequency of your posting. It's um, contrary to popular belief, if you post too often, you're actually going to show up less in the newsfeed. Well, kind of I'm using people. post. I use Post Rocket. Okay, so they're yeah. they're spaced out really well. Mm -hmm. um, I Which usually is, try not to go more than like four hours apart. Yeah. Just with, do you find them? That's a really key thing you just brought up. So do you find at the four hour mark that that any engagement has completely and naturally dried up? Dried up? Or are you still getting engagement at four hours? I 
don't get huge amounts of engagement on that page, so it's usually stopped by that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I might mix it up. I might stretch it out. Go first, maybe try six hours. Because the mm-hmm. thing is, that if you have more than two or three posts in the news feed at the same time, you're actually going to bug your fans. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I rotate my network. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. I hope that's helpful, Peggy. It was very helpful. Thank you, Mary. All right, soon. All right thanks for that question, Peggy. Next caller oh, dialing hi. in from Connecticut. You may go ahead with your question. Hi, I wanted to ask... Uh, if you wanted uh, uh, your Facebook friends to be able to post pictures about your business, how can you encourage them to do that? Um, gosh. Well, I would probably put something right up top in your cover image. Um, gosh, was it Verizon? I think Verizon recently did something really fun with that, and they had like a a contest where the fans they encouraged the fans to post their own. Oh, yeah, they do. If you go to facebook.com slash Verizon, beautifully done, beautifully done example for exactly what you're talking about. Their cover image, what they do is they just, they use a fan's cover image and then they put the little icon of the person and they say, the, I'm looking at this right now, this photo taken by Amber B with a Verizon wireless. Set. We're, we're running out of time, but I can actually, um, uh, let me just do this. I think I'm sharing my screen with you all if you can see that. Yeah, there it goes. So for those of you who can see my screen, um, this is just a beautiful example, Verizon Wireless. So I would recommend doing that. And and you could write on your wall, put it out as a post periodically and pin it to the top and let people know that you're you're going to display their photos in as your cover image. You could rotate them, have a little bit of a contest. But the main thing really you want to make it fun, fun and engaging and interactive and not just like, hey everybody, post your photos. Have some kind of a um, you know means to an end to it, or just like something that actually people get. Oh my gosh! If I submit my photo, then I could have it up in the cover image. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, I'm very new to Facebook, so I'm looking forward to the rest of the seminars to get some other questions answered. Awesome, awesome! You'll find some tremendous content. You're in the right place. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thanks for that question as well. We're glad you're here. Next caller, you are live on the line. Hello, I'm in uh, Tampa, Florida, and uh, really appreciate this uh, opportunity to talk to you. I'm, I'm in the financial service business, and I do a lot of educational-based marketing. Uh, it's, and I haven't, I'm just new to Facebook, and I'm thinking about using it. Does it make sense to try to have or to use that platform to in just a local area, or is it just too broad a Oh, my gosh, yeah. Actually, I think that local businesses quite often have a strategic advantage over over businesses that are, are more online-based because, in fact, I'll just see this here. I don't see it. I wonder if I could come up with an example for you here. But um, So, for example, Verizon Wireless, this page, if you're looking at your desktop right here, what you'll see is we're here. So, number one, you get check-ins. People can check in. That means when they come to your premises, with their smartphones, uh, they can let people know. People may or may not be comfortable to do that in the financial services industry. That's, that's possibly a drawback there. But a good thing is that recommendations, uh, actually don't see it right down here on the, on the Verizon page, but um, let me bring up one of my favorite pages if I can. Let me spell it right. There you go. Iron Horse. You're like, oh, yeah, here goes Mari and her wine. I do like wine. Ha, ha, ha. Um, so what happens is you'll see uh, in the about section you get to have all this different information with your address, your open hours, etc. But for you, especially for financial services, if you can get encourage people to write a recommendation, uh, you'll see this box right here. Uh, this is unique to local businesses. Regular fan pages do not have this box here with the recommendation. So that's an advantage right there too. And so um, you know, you can do all kinds of creative things that would uh, would show up in the mobile. We were talking about the um, sponsored stories and, and the promoted posts. That goes out into the mobile news feed as well. Plus, something we didn't even talk about today, I'm not sure if this would apply to financial services, but you know, you could get creative. I always love to see industries that push the envelope and do something unique and different. But there's something called check-in deals check-in deals. So if people do come to your premises and they check in, they can go ahead and get a deal because they've checked and that's unique to place pages. Does that help at all? It helps a lot. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. Enjoy the rest of the conference.
All right, fantastic. Unfortunately, that is all about uh, the time we have questions for today. Mari, there's one last question I wanted to squeeze mm -hmm. in um, from sure. Julie, who had to head okay. out a little early, but um, she's asking, should you care about geotargeting if you're a nonprofit without a storefront or just an admin office? Not really, yeah, because geotargeting is, is predominantly going to, going to impact people that have a physical premise, um, you know, people that you want to target, people that are in the vicinity of your premises where you're focusing on foot traffic. And the more foot traffic you get in the door, the more likely you are to make more sales. So that may or may not affect the, the nonprofit with the admin office, unless a lot of people come there, you know. So okay. Sounds yeah. good. And Mari, I want to give you the opportunity to leave us uh, with some famous last words this evening. <laughs> famous <laughs> last words. Okay, one of my favorite quotes, I made this up. Everybody's heard for a long time that content is king. However, the part I add on is that engagement is queen and she rules the house. So content is king, engagement is queen, and she rules the house. It's all about engaging, respond to people. I can't stress that uh, enough that how important it is to not just get the content out there, but also to really engage with people on your different social networks. It's been a joy to serve everybody. Please feel free to come over to my fan page anytime, ask questions, facebook.com slash Mari Smith. Obviously, go to Social Media Examiner, facebook.com slash smexaminer. We'll see you on Twitter and Facebook. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Mari Smith, your presenter today. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude this Facebook Success Summit session. We had a lot of questions, so if your questions were not addressed, please feel free to post them in our social networking club. You can access the club via your event login page at whitepapersource.com slash Facebook 2012. This concludes our keynote presentation. Thank you so much for joining us. You may now disconnect.